Hey guys, we are live. It's Wednesday and it's power hour. So I hope you guys can join me tonight. It's Wednesday guys. It's 10 minutes before 9 p.m. I hope you can join me earlier. We are starting in about 10 minutes and we are um, going to be discussing Proverbs 30. So if you have your Bibles with you, if you have your Bible with you, um, just have it ready and you can read with us. Uh, tonight, again, Proverbs 30. It's part of our Wisdom to Reign in Life series. So if you're there, say hello. Let me just uh, check my my view as well in my computer. I want to make sure that we... I see myself and I see your comments and questions. Hey guys, if you um, have any questions or comments during our discussion, you know what to do. Just type your questions in the comment section below and we can talk about your questions um hang on okay i see myself let me just uh mute my computer real quick and i see okay so we are live good evening okay see people robert and joe uh you're here uh jessa my husband sally hello good evening mills sees good evening to you hello everyone it's nice to see you i miss you guys last week nice to see you tonight <laughs> Uh, Rose is Rose. Hi, good evening to you. Who else is here? Arlene, good evening. How are you? Um, thank you for coming in early. And again, our topic tonight is Proverbs 30. So we are actually, this is the last, uh, second to the last chapter of our series, of our long series, right? Second to the last. So our last one will be this coming Saturday, Proverbs 31. Um, it's one of the many, many favorites, uh, at least mine, my favorite chapter in Proverbs. And it's definitely not just for women. So guys, I'd like to, uh, of course, uh, encourage you to listen in as well on this coming Saturday's uh, conversation. It's about uh, Proverbs 31 and describing a Proverbs 31 woman. Okay. Good evening, Ian. Uh, I hope Grace is there with you as well. Si Spot, magandang gabi sa'yo. Good evening. Um, okay, so yeah, thank you guys for coming in. And we'll wait for a few more people. Seven minutes. We have seven minutes. Okay, Proverbs 30. And there's a lot of things here. So in Proverbs 30, again, just like how we were doing the chapter per chapter, there's a lot of different thoughts right in in this uh, in this chapter I I've, I've meditated on on this chapter for a long time really because sometimes there are things here that I could not understand um, things here that like I'm asking the Holy Spirit what do we need to learn from these <laughs> so, so um, yeah and I would love for your inputs as well if you have any a, a different revelation or additional revelation to these verses feel free to share you know we're here to share um, even though you're you're just there just type away guys and share your thoughts as well good evening grace good evening Celia magandang gabi sayo nice for you to join us here tonight uh, in our power hour how's my audio by the way uh, internet connection video and audio can you let me know if if everything is okay if my mic is good if you can hear me well um, or not let me know as well okay ayan, I, I see grace hi me hi good evening to you good evening so we're gonna wait for six more minutes we're gonna be starting at 9 p.m. Um, and and thank you guys for for showing up by the way again this is our second to the last in this series we have I lost count but I believe uh, I really lo probably have 20 plus videos in this series okay it's a, it's our longest series so um, you can look at them in our guide section and each one actually has a homework assignment as well so listen guys um, the homework assignment just take the time to meditate on on um, on a question and then write down your thoughts and I will be looking at them maybe next week I'll look at them and for those who have completed all and I said all right lahat ng assignments all assignments there will be some some reward for you guys you know it's fun to learn so um and we, we make it fun here in now faders so if you have completed all the assignments 
we'll do something together i don't know <laughs> i don't have i don't have ideas yet but i'm sure i'll have some next week so uh there's it's not too late to just go back and see okay check each homework and make sure that you have you have done them right you have uh, uh, look into them and of course I'm assuming that you listen to the call and then you answer the homework right you're not just going back and answering the homework um, anyway this is Noreen Knives uh, good evening Deborah hi good evening Olive hi good evening to you this is Tanya good evening yay reward yes we have rewards we have surprises we'll see what what we can do but again it's fun to learn we make it fun to learn definitely a lot of a lot of um, wisdom to learn from this series but then at the same time rewards and prices for us as well so let's make it fun why not right um, audio and video are good thank you so much for that feedback okay so we have four more minutes um, who here has read the Proverbs 30 I'm assuming you guys have read this right Proverbs 30 that's our topic here tonight Mildred hi good evening to you Okay, so I'm assuming most of you have, and uh, um, I guess we we have three minutes. I'm just gonna say this. I, I mean, these are we we are aware that that the book of Proverbs was written by Solomon. Okay, but then for this particular uh, a chapter, uh, another prophet was named. His name is Agur. Okay, Agur, A G U R, and he actually wrote this chapter. I'm going to explain to you, um, I guess there's a lot of theologians who looked into this and, and Jewish uh, expositors who looked into this as well. And they have some explanations on this one. So we're going to discuss this. But again, uh, in general, uh, it's written by Solomon. But for this particular one, it's this prophet named Agur. Okay, so we're going to um, discuss that. Good evening, Janelyn. Uh, Adrian and Michelle, hello to you. And Sis Sheila, hello, good evening. Thank you guys for showing up. Thank you guys for being here early. Um, good evening, Weens. Hi, Miss you, Sis. Sis Winnie, good evening to you. Um, so we have 24 people in Facebook right now. Um, usually we have around 40-ish people. So we're probably going to trickle in uh, later. But guys, hey, I uh, just want to let you know if this, all our calls, our, our conversations is helping you, please share this to your friends and family to the people that you know i um my goal this this year is to expand now fate is um it's to uh, get more people into into listening uh to the word of god into listening to faith filled messages right not fear we want to we want to we want to um break all the fear that is happening around us right and fill it with faith so if you guys can help me with this, uh, this year again, we, I want to expand this and it's a uh, goal is 5,000 members, but then we're only up to almost closer, closing to a thousand, but I don't think it's impossible, right? Especially if you guys help me uh, do this again, if it's helping you, if the messages is, in, is encouraging you, if the messages is changing your ways, your thoughts, if, if the messages is, um, is helping your situation, Please feel free to share this with your friends and family. Okay, uh, uh, Kate, I see you. Hi, good evening to you. My ina anak. Uh, uh, Tita Kayat, good evening to you. Everyone, thank you again for joining. Carla, I see you. Good evening. RV, hi, good evening, RV. And hopefully, Jan is with you as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. It's 8 59. Uh, let's start with prayer. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. Lord, uh, we thank you. We praise you we glorify you and we lift up to you our conversation tonight lord proverbs 30 lord you are in the center of our conversation holy spirit give me the wisdom give me the words to say and i permit you to speak through me oh lord god right now speak through me oh lord we are here expectant of revelations of the things that we can learn again the wisdom to be able to reign in life to be able to reign in our situations in our current situations right now lord we thank you and uh, we praise you and we glorify you and we plead the blood of jesus over our conversation over everyone here tonight and all the families that are being represented here tonight and th those who are going to be listening to this call thank you lord and i plead the blood of jesus over our internet connections over our devices as well 
we praise you lord we glorify you in jesus name we pray amen and amen okay good evening sis myra hi i see you good evening to you so again our, pro our our topic tonight is proverbs 30 okay proverbs 30 and again um proverbs the book of proverbs is was written by king solomon right uh, however for this particular chapter um, it says that it's written by a prophet named Agur. Okay, and I'm going to read to you uh, verse 1. It says, The words of Agur, the son of Jaki, his utterance, this man declared to Ithiel, to Ithiel and Yukal. Okay, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing these names correctly, okay? But, um, you know what, guys? This, this a I'm just going to give you the meanings of the names, okay? Uh, the name Agur means to to gather a harvest, and he was it. It's meant, it was mentioned here. It says he was the son of Jacki, which means this name means blameless or obedient. Okay, so Jacki, it, it, uh, the theologians were saying that Jacki could be another name for David, Solomon's father, of course, and then many Jewish expositors believe that Agur, uh, who is the writer of this chapter was a pseudonym for Solomon. So I guess some people believe that it, this is this chapter was still written by Solomon, okay? And let's 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 look at the names again. The name Ithiel can mean God is with me or God has arrived. And then you call means I am able or I am strong and mighty. Now, why am I giving you the name, the meaning of these names? Now, let's put them all together. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of interesting. When you put them all together, the meaning of these names, right? Uh, what name? Agur, uh, Ithiel, Yukal, Jackie. What are the meaning of these names? It gathered to, or placed them all together. It says, gather a harvest of sons who are blameless and obedient. They will have God with them, and they will be strong and mighty. Isn't that great? That's what, that, that's what this verse 1 is saying, right? And this is talking to you and I, guys. What? Gather a harvest of sons who are blameless and obedient. We're all blameless. We have the blood of Jesus covering us, right? So we are blameless, and hopefully we are obedient, <laughs> right? And then it says, they will have God with them, and they will be strong and mighty. That's nice, right? Okay, let's continue on. Uh, let's continue on. Verse 2, it says, surely I am more stupid than any man. Again, this is the author speaking. And that's why maybe some, some uh, Jewish people are, are saying, you know what? This is not Solomon. Why would Solomon say he's stupid? Right? He's actually the wisest of them all. Anyway, but let's see. It says, Surely I am more stupid than any man and do not have the understanding of a man. Verse 3, it says, I neither learned wisdom nor have the knowledge of the Holy One. Okay? And then verse 4, it says, Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the earths, all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? If you know. Okay, so just looking at this, okay, this guy, this prophet, he's a prophet, Agur, um, is talking about, I don't have the wisdom, I don't have the understanding, right? And he's asking these questions, who has descended into heaven, who has ascended into heaven or descended? And who is, what is his name, and what is his son's name? Of course, we're talking about Jesus, right? This, th these verses are talking about God and Jesus. Now, this tells us that although um, this guy is saying that he doesn't have the wisdom, but obviously it's guided and it's, it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, right? What he's saying are guided and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Right? I'm going to read to you the TPT version. I like the TPT. It says, Who is that that travels back and forth from the heavenly realm to the earth? Who controls the wind as, as it blows and holds it in his fists? Who tucks the rain into the cloak of his clouds? Who stretches out the skyline from one vista to the other? 
What is his name? What is the name of his son? What can uh, who can tell me? Okay. Um, so it this is this is uh, again just telling us that this is wisdom, still wisdom and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now verse five it says, "Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in Him." This is talking about the power and the purity in God's words, right? In of the Bible, of the Word of God. And you can use the Word of God to protect you. The Word of God is like a shield to those who trust in the, in the Lord, right? To those who trust in His Word. Um, if you remember in Ephesians, it talks, about, um, it talks about the shield of faith, right? The shield of faith, it's part of our, our weapons, the, our, uh, our armor is the shield of faith and when you talk about faith how do you increase your faith it's by hearing the word of god right so they're all connected so again the word is a shield for us now if you are ignorant of the word of god pretty much in the spirit realm you just drop your shield right pretty much when you are ignorant and you don't know the word of god you actually are in a battlefield without a shield to protect you in the spirit realm okay um, uh, the TPT says every promise from the faithful God is pure and proves to be true that's beautiful right every promise is pure and true okay verse 6 it says do not add to his words lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar uh, the TPT version says never add to his words or he will have to rebuke you and prove that you're a liar right? this reminds me of of that verse in the new testament and i don't have it here but bottom line let god be true and every man a liar that's what it says so every man you know you you every man a liar but not the word of god right not the word of god not the words that come out of, of god's god's mouth uh, verse 7 it says two things I request of you de deprive me not before I die what remove falsehood and lies far from me give me neither poverty nor riches feed me with the food allotted to me you know this actually made me think a little bit let me read to you, to you the TPT version it says God there are two things I'm asking you for before I die only two things right the first one is empty out my heart uh, empty up my heart everything that is false okay that's the first one and then the second one is uh, give me neither undue poverty nor undue wealth but rather feed my soul with the measure of prosperity that pleases you I don't have the NLT version of this maybe I should look it up but I don't have the NLT version of this but I read the NLT version this could easily be um, uh, what is understood differently okay this this could be and, and this could you could actually hang on to this as a uh, hang on let me just go to that real quick because I it's hard to not go there and not be able to I hope I have it here Proverbs 30 okay there NLT version I'm gonna read to you the NLT version of this verse which is very interesting it says uh, on verse 8 it says First, help me neither to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor, nor riches. Okay, this is the phrase. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. Okay, this can easily be used to justify what? To justify mediocrity, to, to justify passivity, right? To justify these things. Now, let me read to you. It says here, um, let me just talk about the first one. It says, uh, empty out my heart with everything that is false with every lie and every crooked thing actually in King James Version it says empty out my heart with vanity and lies vanity and lies and vanity guys are the things that really don't matter right these are the things that are good are nice these are what I call the blings right of the life of our lives but they 
actually won't create any impact in in your purpose in in uh, your calling right and even probably would move you away from the purpose or calling that you have um, and this is actually very prevalent in our culture today vanity right and maybe in other cultures of course yes it's very prevalent um, it's it's just interesting let me read to you 2nd Corinthians 9 10 it says that the word the, uh, 2nd Corinthians 9 10 says the Lord will the Lord will give you seeds to sow and bread to eat okay uh, again 2nd Corinthians 9 10 the Lord will give you either seeds to sow or bread to eat now listen the money and the resources that you receive the money and the resources that you have with you that God places in your hands right are supposed to be used as either one bread to eat okay and when I talk about bread to eat it's for your daily needs it's your food it's your clothing it's your shelter and include include the vanity here include the wants right the wants the new phone the laptop the, the car whatever you want right this is still part of the bread to eat and and when you talk about seeds to sow right when we talk about seeds money and resources that are seeds these are to give to the church right and give to other ministries and you're familiar with this right when we talk about sowing seeds it's mostly in general talking about sowing seeds to church and ministries however guys listen seeds are also money and resources right that you use to sow to yourself that you use to sow to your business that you use to sow to your self-growth right and I want to bring this up and I, I want to I want to camp here a little bit on this verse that talks about vanity and lies right and you're familiar with lying you're familiar with lies of course it's those things that are away from truth but let's talk about vanity real quick right and I think a lot of Christians are struggling financially because of this because they don't recognize the difference between what is seed to sow and what is bread to eat right let's just say you have twenty thousand dollars twenty pesos na lang twenty thousand pesos extra right now extra maybe you receive a bonus um or you you receive a gift from someone twenty thousand dollars and then of course you ask the next thing you do is you ask the holy spirit lord what is this for is this bread for me to eat or is this seed for me to sow right bread for me to eat is it time for me to buy that new phone that i was eyeing on is it time for me to um go and and, and travel and go to this to this place that i want to go to with my family right that's part of bread to eat or is it a seed is it a seed do i put it in the business that i'm building right now do i save it as a capital for my business for for the future of my business but listen, if you don't consult the Holy Spirit, a lot of times the default is, oh, I have extra, I'm going to use it as bread to eat, right? I have extra, I'm going to use it for the thing that I want to buy. Listen, when you miss out on consulting the Holy Spirit, when you don't consult the Holy Spirit, and you just decided to what? Eat your seeds. There is such thing eating your seeds instead of your bread you eat your seeds when you decide to eat your seeds and not involve the holy spirit in your decisions you miss out on the level of increase that god had already prepared for you you miss out on the level of increase that god had already prepared for you this is a very important principle that you need to understand knowing what is seed and knowing what is bread it's the principle of bread and seed so um understand this guys actually i have it in my notes it says give me just enough yeah it's and then i'm gonna move on it says um proverbs 30 verse 8 give me neither poverty nor riches give me just enough to satisfy my needs and this again, as, as I was saying, this could be easily misunderstood. And um, you can look at this to, to just to justify passivity and mediocrity in your life. But 2 Corinthians 9, 8, we go back a few verses 
uh, with what I just read. It says, And God is able to make all grace toward uh, abound toward you. Abound. Overflow, right? Overflow. His blessings, His grace toward you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have abundance. May have an abundance for every good work. You are blessed. So that you can be a blessing you have overflow so that you can be a blessing to others right so asking this give me just enough to satisfy my needs it's not kingdom right to just say i just want just enough or sakto lang gusto ko yung sakto lang tama lang okay na ako contento na ako right this is not kingdom Right? This is not the kingdom. And again, guys, that's why I go back to when you're reading the Old Testament uh, books. The Bible is a progressive revelation. Okay, Keep this in mind. Always keep this in mind. The revelations about who God is and, and our identity right, is progressive in the Bible. So your revelation, your revelation, you and I, right now, is definitely so much higher right than the ones who um, were in the old testament and who wrote this this prophet agar or solomon right but bottom line their revelation of who god is at this time uh, they didn't know jesus right they were inspired by the holy spirit yes but there's no indwelling of the holy spirit again just talk about uh go back to our conversation about the covenant but listen Aside from having a better covenant, we have higher revelation, right, of who God is and who we are. So then, therefore, this should not be a prayer, right? It's not, give me just enough, Lord, to satisfy my needs. It's not kingdom, right? And I hope I, that, that's clear with you guys. Um, let me just take the time to read some of your uh, comments here. Good evening. I see you, I see you. Uh, Knife says, gather a harvest of sons who are blameless and be they will. Okay, so he, she just wrote down what I, I read. Mm. Hi, Jen. Since Jen is here. Jen says, every promise is pure and true. Yes. Amen. God's word is a shield for us. Yes. Good evening, Charlene. Hi. Uh, Chari. Chari pala. Neil, good evening to you. Um... Feed my soul with a measure of prosperity that pleases you. Wow, it is wow. And listen, what is the what is a measure of prosperity that pleases God? It's not just enough. Okay? The because if you look at the, the uh, how the author wrote this, it's just just give me enough. That's the message. But yeah, I agree with that with that sentence. Lord, give me give me the the measure of prosperity that pleases you and you know what guys what is that measure Ephesians 320 he is able to give you what exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works inside of you according to the Holy Spirit's power that is working inside of you exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think above all that you can imagine that is the measure of prosperity that pleases our Father God so I hope that's clear. And then Grace says, yes, ask the Holy Spirit. Inquire the Holy Spirit what to do because that's God's money paren. And we are His money manager. Yes, perfect. And then eating your seeds. Yes, and you can miss out. Miss out on the level of increase that God had already prepared for you. I've seen this over and over in our lives and even in the lives of others, guys. This is so true. Understand the principle of bread and seed and identify right and this is not you identifying it on your own you need the guidance of the holy spirit to identify lord in these in this resource that i have in the money that i have right now what is seed for for sowing and what is bread for eating right um uh, atilene says we have abundance of blessings to be a channel of blessing to others yes yes Amen. Ephesians 3, 20. That is the measure. Okay? Not is. Give, not, not this one. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. I don't like that. Anyway, so every word again, just listen to that. Uh, um, 
keep this in mind, right? It's progressive revelation, right? Every word in the Bible is inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit, right? But we need to understand that. We need to understand the progressive revelation side. And listen, um, this is another example. So Psalm 51, 11, this is by David. David said this prayer. He said, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take the Holy Spirit from me. This doesn't apply to us as well, right? This is not for us either. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. The Holy Spirit forever will stay with us, right? That's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But back then, in the time of David, right? Holy Spirit comes and goes. He comes and goes, depending on uh, the purpose, I guess, right? So keep that in mind. Okay, verse 9, it says, Lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. This is connected to uh, verse 8, um, which says, in, in the Passion Translation, it says, May my satisfaction be found in you. Don't let me be rich so that I don't need you. Or so poor that I have to resort to dishonesty to make my ends meet. Then my life will never detract from bringing glory to your name. And the heart is correct, right? This is his heart. He, he was saying this. He was requesting this from the Lord so that he doesn't get, um, I guess, distracted away from uh, God's path for, him, for his life, right? But listen again, why can't, why can't we have both, right? Why can't we have the prosperity that is really what, what God has prepared for us. And then at the same time, be walking on the path that He had provided for us. Right? You can, you can have both. And then verse 10, it says, Do not malign a servant to his master. So again, going on a different thought. We're going from thought to thought to thought to thought. Okay, guys? So it's, it's not, this is not just one topic. Um, so again, verse 10, it says, Do not malign a servant to his master, lest he curse you and you be found guilty. I'm like thinking, okay, uh, TPT says, never defame a servant before his master, for you will be the guilty one and a curse will come upon you. Malign, what does malign mean? It's speaking someone in a spitefully critical manner. And guys, um, I, I'm, in one way or another, we're, we're guilty of this, right? We talk about someone, maybe you're aware of it or maybe you're not aware of it, but you're actually already being critical and being spiteful right this is maligning and hey i'm guilty right and and listen um this is not just talking about servant to a master do not malign anyone period <laughs> this is what this is saying but then i i like the fact that it, it it used the uh the example of servant to a master it's a good example because Listen, we need to realize by, that by us talking bad about someone, right, we may be causing them to lose business or to lose a job opportunity, right? By you talking and having this conversation and just you're being critical and you're talking bad about this person and someone who is looking for maybe a business partner or an employee to hire, maybe listening, right? And right away disqualifies the person that you are talking about now what did you just do you just cost the person the opportunity right you just disqualified the person you get what i'm saying so this is important and, and that's why we need to catch ourselves and listen I'm, i know i'm talking to to the choir here but yeah this is something that we need to be reminded of i was reminded right and and also the i posted this in 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 it's under guides under weapons of warfare look up silencing the voices of accusation it's a prayer i was reminded of this prayer why because listen satan is the accuser of the brethren it says in revelation right he, every single day he's out there accusing us right accusing the believers but then not directly but he uses other people to talk bad about us he uses other people to be critical about us in this uh, in turn we're actually block increase in opportunities in our lives and so that's why it's it's very important to say this prayer right i am silencing the voices 
of the enemy that's speaking to me or speaking to other people about me right because these voices are actually blocking opportunities they're blocking uh, increase in our lives they're causing like this they're causing doubt they're causing um again opportunities to be to move away from your path so i hope this is clear with you guys and okay an offering is a is one form of seeds yeah is seed like offerings yes an offering is one form of seeds right tithes offering um is is a form of seed and again that's obvious actually guys uh helping arms um, these are form of seeds right what's not obvious and what you have to think think uh, and when you start praying is consider right a big a big part of when we start talking about seeds is seeds to yourself right seeds on the business that you're working on seeds on um your self-growth your learning and and your studying and and growing your skills and growing your your talent that's that's seed as well right so don't uh include that in in the choices of okay lord i have seeds right where can i sow uh the seeds to and you are and you should be in in the option right you are good soil you are um a good soil to sow seeds to so keep that in mind right so especially in a business you're building a business you're you're doing something you want to grow in a, in a specific a field then you are a soil a good soil so how about that is it under seeds i don't i don't think so no seeds um um is something that you use to multiply right and based on the principle of the kingdom when you give to the kingdom of god when you give uh to people right that is actually seeds to their lives seeds to the kingdom it comes back right it comes back uh it, it comes back that's in luke believe like give and it shall be given to you right press down shaken to go together and running over so that's the principle in the kingdom um it multiplies so and it's also the same with putting money in uh, or capital into your business that multiplies right when you put money into that i i don't i don't see any kind of multiplication there right so i, I that's not that's not uh seeds it's actually probably part of your bread i don't know because it's either bread or seed right anyway so um let's go to verses 11 to 14 verses 11 to 14 i'm gonna just uh sometimes i need to refresh guys so that i can see all your comments but let me read to you verses 11 to 14 and i'm gonna read to you the tpt version okay it's easier to understand 11 to 14 is one thought um, there is a generation rising that curses their fathers and speaks evil of their mothers there's a generation rising that considers themselves to be pure in their own eyes, yet they're morally filthy, unwashed, and unclean. There is a generation rising that is so filled with pride, they think they are superior and look down on others. There is a generation rising that uses their words like swords to cut and slash those who are different. They would devour the poor, the needy, and the afflicted, from off the face of the earth wow right and this is talking about these generations that are rising but you know what guys i think you and i would agree that it's already here right you see this generation you see the generation of people who disrespects and dishonors their parents i mean even probably back in the 60s you see that already right but listen to this and, and talking about dishonoring and talking about disrespecting parents right listen this is one of satan's big tactics big weapons against us and cursing the future generation it's against the future generation it's to have the youth dishonor and disrespect their parents you may you may see sometimes it's, it's becoming a norm right 
eh talagang hindi magalang yung bata yan. Ganyan kasi yung naging culture. You know, sometimes we we even, especially if you're probably from the U.S. and you lived in the U.S. and you come here and you're so like open-minded and, and so liberated and you say, you know what, that's normal because that's their culture. But you know what? It's it's not about culture. It's looking at what does the Word of God say about these things, right? And listen to this, Ephesians 6, 1 to 3 talks about children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right it's the right thing to do right verse 2 it says honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with promise it's the first commandment with promise verse 3 it says that in it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth what is the promise it says it's the first commandment with promise what is the promise verse 3 says the promise that it may be well with you number one and number two you may live long on the earth you know this word well it may uh, it may be well the word well is actually from a Hebrew word no a Greek word because this is in the New Testament it's from the original Greek word you uh, EU you and it means to be well off it means to prosper right it means to be well off it means to prosper and then it says and that you may live long on earth so listen what is the promise of respecting and honoring your parents it's the promise of prosperity and health prosperity and health and long life that's the promise and so then therefore if we tolerate a generation right and continue the cycle of dishonoring parents what we're really um what we're really breaking in this generation is breaking the promise of wealth of riches of prosperity and good health in this generation in the next generations right so listen guys if you have children instill this in their hearts and in their minds it's for them it's not for you yeah it's nice to have uh, kids that are honoring you and respecting you but ultimately it is for them it's not for you it's for the next generation and did you know guys in the old testament let me just go back to this it, what, what is the spiritual uh, another spiritual um meaning of this in in the old testament in leviticus 20 verse 9 deuteronomy 21 verses 18 to 21 i'm just i just i'm just i'm not gonna read the, them but listen what they in the old testament if a child curses uh one of his parents right the child will be reprimanded yes but then if the child does it again what do they do they bring the child to the elders right if the child is unrepentant right he he thinks you know it's okay to disobey and disrespect the parents they stone the child to death yes you heard it right they stone the child to death why why do they do that because listen first samuel 15 23 and i'm not going to read this this verse but it says uh in first samuel 15 23 that that is uh, this honoring of course is, is rebellion right rebellion is a form of witchcraft and rebellion is demonic rebellion is demonic and you know what guys in the Old Testament once a person terms turn he turns himself over to demons they cannot be delivered they cannot be delivered they're not equipped they're not empowered right however right this doesn't apply to us because now that's the Old Testament now uh, I'm gonna read to you Acts 13 39 it says and by him by Jesus everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses right I'm gonna read this by him by Jesus everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses so if before if you're rebellious they stone you to death <laughs> but now if you're rebellious you can get delivered so guys there's deliverance there's redemption that's good news right there right and and, and again it's the just looking at and understanding the differences whenever you read this and you read the word it's looking at it from a lens of uh, a new testament believer 
right? From a, a, a new covenant under grace, right? Okay, anyway, so I hope you guys are... How about borrowing and loaning for business capital? Um, what's the question of that, says Myra? Is it wrong? Are you asking if it's wrong or are you asking if it's a seed, right? Um, and again, personally, there is nothing wrong with borrowing. Okay, you can see this uh, as an example with the um, the widow with a jar with with the jars of oil. Remember, he, Elijah asked her to go out and what and borrow jars from his neighbors as many as she could, right? As many as she could. So she went out, borrowed jars, and filled all the jars with oil. So there's no um, there's nothing wrong with borrowing, but then of course it has to be from uh, leading and guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. So I'm not saying that for you guys to just go out and borrow and, and go get credit cards and all that stuff. I'm not saying that. But listen, um, if that is the guidance, if that's if that's the, the wisdom that you receive, don't discount it because there's nothing wrong with borrowing. However, it needs to be, everything needs to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so I hope that's clear. So uh, let's talk about verse 12 it says there's a generation rising that considers themselves to be pure in their eyes yet they're morally filthy and washed and unclean you know what guys um it's 9 37 oh my gosh i'm not even halfway through it's 9 37 if we don't finish we have more time on saturday so i'm going to continue on saturday okay but verse 12 it says generation rising that considers themselves to be pure yet they're morally filthy you know what there's new there is a new standard of morality that is being of course uh, being spoken out there right being uh, advertised it's in the movies it's in the shows it's in the music it's in the social media it's in everything that you see watch hear listen to right that is acceptable to the world acceptable to society right and it's becoming the new standard of morality it's acceptable but you know what is it aligned with God's word? Is it acceptable with the Lord? That is really the question for us, right? So we need to be very, very vigilant with understanding and see if you don't know the word of God, you won't be able to filter what is from the world and what is from God. So more than any season of our lives, I really, really think and I believe that this is the time and the season to really know right to really understand the word of god and the wisdom of god on how to live our lives according to his ways right not according to the world because the world's voice is so loud it's not just loud but it's very aggressive now right it's very aggressive everything that was um i'm gonna read to you in ephesians Okay, l let, me, let me just continue and, and we're going to touch on that. 13, it says, There's a generation rising that is so filled with pride, they think they're superior and look down on others. There's a generation rising that uses their words like swords. Okay, and cut, to cut and slash those who are different, and they would devour the poor, the needy, the afflicted. Okay, now, when you read the Old Testament and you, you read the battles, right? They, have the, they, they battle with the Amorites, the Amalekites, the, um, the Canaanites, you know, all of these people. And these are battle of the flesh, right? These are battle in the physical, right? And this is in the Old Testament. Now here now in our season right now, although we still see, yes, there are still physical wars. There are still physical battle, right? With guns and missiles maybe, but... Listen, the Bible says that there's a generation rising that uses their swords, actually uses their words like swords. What is this saying? The bigger war that is, that is here and now is the one that is not obvious. It's the one that uses and that battles with words. Words, right? Ephesians 6.12 says that our battle is not of the flesh. It's not of the physical. Our battle is in the spirit realm. The war is in the spirit. Using what? Using words. These words are being used as swords, right? To afflict you, to attack you. So where do you see this? News, the media, 
movies, shows, music, and exposure. You know what? Just go out. Actually, you don't need to go out. Stay in the house. Turn on your TV or um, go to your phone and you see this all around you, right? They're filled with words that are being used as swords to attack you, right? To attack the family, to slowly kill our society today. And I hope your eyes, spiritual eyes, are open to these things, right? And I was reminded of Isaiah 54, 17. It says, every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Isn't it interesting? It used the word tongue. Every tongue that rises against you. It's not of the physical, like, suntok or punching you on the face or slapping you on the face it's not that it's talking about the tongue it's talking about the words being used right to rise against you to condemn you um to uh to to um, rise against you in judgment and then you what do you need to do if words are being used against you then you need to fight back with words and that's why, again, you go back to the Word of God because that's your sword right there. Ephesians 6 talks about the armor of God and your sword is the Word of God, right? If, if the, the enemy is using words to, to afflict you, you need to use the Word of God to fight those things, right? So you're not, God had, had equipped us. God had empowered us. So I hope you, you are aware of this. And, and I was reminded, you know what, 2020, and this is so true. Just look around you guys. 2020 is the decade. So it's not just the, the, the entire 10 years of 2020, 20, 2020 until 2030. It's a decade of the mouth, right? It's a decade of the mouth. And it's really, a, it's really against, it's words against words. It's words from the world against the word of God and you can see this all around you um, verse 15 it says um, TPT I'm gonna to read to you TPT 15 and 16 there are three words to describe the greedy give me more and there are some things that are never satisfied forever craving more they're unable to say that's enough and here are four it says the grave four things that's insatiable okay the grave yawning for another victim the barren womb ever wanting a child thirsty soil ever longing for rain and a raging fire devouring its fuel and these are all insatiable and listen i don't know i'm asking the holy spirit give me a revelation on these <laughs> i don't know what they mean so i just have to be to be honest with you i just say okay these are observations good i don't have additional revelation to these so if you have any additional revelation let me know but I'm just I just read you the the passion translation let's move on 17 it says the eye that mocks his father and and dishonors his elderly mother going back to honoring our parents okay deserves to be plucked out by the ravens of the valley and fed to the young vultures Wow okay you know what ravens and vultures these are this is actually a figure of speech for what for demonic powers again when you say rebellion it's not a small thing guys right when you say disrespect dishonoring it's not a small thing it's a demonic thing right um it and again it, the vulture and the ravens are representing demonic powers that will remove the vision and we're not talking about physical vision right remove the dreams remove the vision remove um, what's in front of them the future right of these children and ravens and vultures are unclean birds associated with demonic powers in in hebrew poetry Re rebellion is witchcraft it's demonic okay I just have to say that Let, let's move on four mysteries okay let me uh let me read How about borrowing loaning for a business capital? It is, is it a seed? Um, I'm going to go back to uh, Myra's question. It is a seed. There's nothing wrong with borrowing. Um, again, if you're led with, uh, from, you're led by the Holy Spirit. And yes, it is a seed, right? Because you use it for your business. If you use it for the business, 
it's a seed. If you buy, if you use it to buy a car for yourself, a brand new car, no, it's not a seed. It's a bread. Use it for bread. Now, when you use it to invest to a business, that's a seed. Because what? Because when you increase the business, it brings uh, multiplication into your life. So yes, that's a seed. Um, okay, Saldi just uh, Saldi says a seed often comes from the work of your hands. For example, a farmer's harvest in which part of it is bread and part of it is seed. So borrowing capital for business is really not a seed. However, if led by the Holy Spirit, sometimes borrowing can be a solution for a breakthrough. Uh, the story of the widow borrowing jars when she obeyed the instruction of the prophet. Um, so Saudi is saying that borrowing capital for business is really not a seed. But isn't that a seed that you put into your business? And if it brings increase into the business, isn't that something that grows? Um, so for me, I look at it as a seed. So I don't know what you guys thought or what you guys think of this. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so let's go. Uh, let's move on. Uh, 18, it says, there are four marvelous mysteries. Okay, this is talking about mysteries. Okay, four marvelous mysteries that are too amazing to unravel. Who could fully explain them? Question mark. This guy is asking, who can explain these things, right? And it's men it mentioned four marvelous mysteries okay the first one it says the way an eagle flies in the sky the way a snake glides on a boulder the path of a ship as it passes through the sea and the way a bridegroom falls in love with his bride it's it's beautiful but then listen guys it again it says it's a mystery these are mysteries in the eyes of the author who what who has limited revelation now, but listen, guys, these are not mysteries to us. These are not mysteries to us. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7, 8, and 10, it says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. You and I, right? We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew none of the people in this world knows about this mystery in the kingdom right but verse 10 says but god has revealed them to us through his spirit through the holy spirit we receive the revelations of these mysteries so therefore they're not mysteries to us sh they shouldn't be right it could be still a mystery to you if you're not seeking if you're not seeking the, the kingdom if you're not learning about the word right but again these are made available these are all the revelations are made available were made available by god to us all right okay what is it saying the way an eagle flies in the sky for me it's it's like a picture of, of overcoming life right and you soar above the sky above your problems and limitations and challenges in life right we have the solution god our father had provided us the solutions to every situation because we have the holy spirit to guide us the way a snake glides on a boulder you know when you talk about a snake it represents sin right and it's just interesting a snake on a boulder a snake placed on a rock and when you talk about a rock in the Bible, it talks about Jesus. So this is really a picture of our sin that's placed on Jesus, the rock, right? Isn't that beautiful? And I hope you and I, you, we have the understanding of this, right? And then it says, the path of a ship as it passes through the sea. It's a picture of, it's a picture of our lives. It's like a ship, right? Sailing. Uh, to reach our hopefully our destination our purpose and our calling right and again this is not a mystery to us because we have the holy spirit to guide us where we're going we have the holy spirit to let us know he is what the spirit of wisdom and revelation to let us know our calling our purpose why are we here about what are we supposed to do here on earth holy spirit is there to what show us great and mighty things things that we do not know as it says in jeremiah 33 3 right so we have him to let us know to tell us the truth and guide us in all things now the way a bridegroom falls in love with his bride you know when you talk about bridegroom and bride 
bottom line it's talking about Jesus who is uh, it's talking about the wedding and it's talking about Jesus the love of Jesus who is the bridegroom right to his bride who is the church you and I right so this is really it's not a mystery we know the love of God we understand the love of God there's dimensions to the love of God but it's a journey right to receive uh, levels of revelations of his love for us but again th these are not mysteries it's all out there it's all out there um, provided by the Father but it's it's us for us it's our journey for us to seek those revelations from the Lord those mysteries that are available for us right okay 951 um, maybe I'll, uh, I'll finish here verse 20 it says this is the way of an adulterous woman she eats and wipes her mouth and says I have done no wickedness it's interesting this is the way of an adulterous woman she eats and wipes her mouth and says I have done no wickedness and listen adulterous women in this case doesn't just talk about the mistress right but this is really in general talks about the ways of the world the culture of the world it's it's the things that look good but it's not really uh, aligning to the purpose and calling that God has for your life that's the adulterous woman and really again as I was saying Kanina we live in a time and purpose in, in the, a time and season where the right becomes wrong and the wrong becomes right for some reason uh, but the word says this and it, in Isaiah 5:20 it says woe to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter baliktad na right those things that before decades ago we know it's wrong completely wrong but for some reason now because it's acceptable in the in in, in our society it becomes right but then they don't stop there it becomes right and then the right thing becomes wrong right i'm not gonna say examples but hey you see this around you guys open your eyes and and look look at what's happening go back to the word of god and you see the truth right and then you'll see the lies and deception around you i'm gonna uh, spend the rest of the time reading your comments here okay sally says borrowing is using someone else's seed okay it's not your own seed okay i agree with with you on that one again if led by the holy spirit it's okay to borrow because you are obeying his instructions but you really need to be sure and use your discernment it may be a different spirit yes so definitely you know what whether that's borrowing money whether asking the help of someone whether having partnering with someone else uh, who, for a business whether whatever that is every step guys you need to work with the Holy Spirit and ask um, and ask for confirmation and that's really is the way to go right it just getting confirmation on every step that you do uh, can it can it be that paying the loan is a seed which comes from the works of our hands uh, coach Sally you're being asked on this one paying the loan is a seed which comes from the works of your hands uh, I'll let you answer this Sally <laughs> anyway so let me see I'm gonna refresh and I don't know if I'm seeing all the questions here or comments but I decided to stop if you have more questions but I don't see any other questions guys if I did not see or read your question okay is it bad if you limit your consumption of bread and just consider it as additional seed uh, this is from Martin um, I don't know if the word is bad or good right there are a lot of good things but still even if they're good if they're not led by the Lord it's not for you so for me it's it's not a, about a question of it's either good or bad it's really more about is it led by the Holy Spirit or not it really is the question okay so it's not oh it sounds good so then maybe if it's good it's from the Lord no not everything that's good is from God for you right it may be good for person a 
it may be good for person B and it's according to the purpose and calling that they have for their life, but don't just copy, right? Because it may not be for you. So the only person who's going to uh, say if it's for you or not is the Holy Spirit. So I cannot highlight this enough, guys, um, when it comes to bread and seed and with what to do with those and steps, next steps with what do you need to do, uh, especially if you're working on, well, any, any aspect of your life, whether that's finances, that's health, that's relationship, right? Every step of the way, it's guided by the Holy Spirit. It's guided by the Holy Spirit. It's not even a question of right or wrong or good or bad, right? It's guided by the Holy Spirit. Um, and of course, it's according to the Word of God, right? So if you thought you heard something and you check the Word and it's not aligned with the Word of God, then most likely that's not the Holy Spirit you're speaking to, right? So um, that's, a good, uh, that's a good filter to use as well. Okay, anyway uh mm, okay so i don't see any other question yeah jen said so and myself this used to be an entirely foreign con foreign concept for me before yeah sometimes we think it's humility right um to not um what do you call this not benefit right um, from these seeds but you know what guys God wants you to prosper God saw the value in your life that he gave his son's life for you right and so what is a resource what is a few thousands of pesos to invest in yourself that's nothing compared to what God had invested in your life it's nothing right so that's again knowing who you are and your identity in Christ. So Saudi says, if you're paying off a loan that you used to start a business and the business is now flourishing, then paying off that loan is considered a seed towards your business. Makes sense? I agree with that, right? If that loan, say it's a credit card that you used to, uh, again, for capital for business, then I think that's a seed. But then if you use that credit card to buy clothes or shoes or whatever, right? Those things, then um, I, don't, I don't see it as seeds. So I hope you know the differences, guys. Bottom line, if it's used for something to grow, to multiply, to bring multiplication to your life, that's seed, right? That is seed. And giving to the kingdom, giving to ministries, giving to people, right? Those are also seeds, right? And, that, and that's a spiritual principle right there. That seeds that comes back and, and it multiplies. Um, now, if it's spent on something, material things, food, whatever, then that's, that's not seed, that's bread, okay? Okay, um, I think uh, that's it. We have two minutes. Let's continue next. Uh, let's continue this, this conversation on Saturday. And we will continue this verse 21 up to verse 30, 33, 21 to 33. And then we continue to Proverbs 31 this coming Saturday. Okay. So I don't see any other questions again unless um, I miss them. And if I miss them, could you please repost them so that I can, I can talk about them or answer them. Okay. Anyway, so... Yeah, that's it. So let me just take the time to, yeah, I don't see any, to pray for you guys. And I hope this uh, blessed you. I hope this gave some clarification on some of the things that you're probably um, are thinking about meditating on or make, maybe making a decision on. Okay, so Lord, I thank you. Lord, we thank you for the words that you have given us, for the revelations that you have given us. Um, in, in everyone here tonight that are listening, we may be in different seasons of our lives, Lord. We may be um, in different situations, in different circumstances. So Lord, I just pray that whatever um, uh, the words that I have, I, have, uh, I have read, just allow it to penetrate, allow it to be absorbed in hundreds of different ways, oh Lord God. 
in, in different situations that we have in our lives today uh, for those who are here in, in this community. So Lord, we thank you for this. I just pray for whatever situation that, that we are dealing with right now. I pray for clarity. I pray for focus. I pray for, um, for distractions to be gone right now in Jesus' name. I pray for a different level of revelation, a different level of breakthrough in whatever situation that you are working on right now in your finances, in your family, in your children, in your marriage, in your health. Um, in your relationship. So that's that's our prayer. And Lord, that's, uh, that's our declaration for tonight, for everybody here tonight and for our families. We thank you, Lord. We praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us tonight. And I'll see you this Saturday for Bible study. Okay, bye-bye.